Okay, pleasant good afternoon to all who are on this webinar. My name is Denise G. Hernandez, Secretary of the Central Executive of Pension Bagel. Our talk this evening is on steel band management. A brief historical perspective. When our steel bands began somewhere in the 1930s, in the early days, they were led by a manager, a captain, one person. That person enjoyed the recognition of being respected by all and looking at being in charge by all. They represented the image of the band so that initially there was no formal management structure to our steel bands. We steel bands are unique entities. They are people-driven groups. So in terms of management structures, no wholesale fit into the standard business model will happen. As registered NPOs, not for profit organizations, we will find that steel bands eventually will have to incorporate a management structure with basic rules and functions. Today, we observe that in our, in our steel band movement, we have a wide and diverse variety of management structures. We still have management where the captain is in charge. We have management where there are small committees. We have management where there are defined structures and rules. The evolution of steel band management into the business model has come about because panniers are now areas of economic activity. And many bands use the economic activity to augment their financial requirements. So we know that banks today have monthly expenditures, just like businesses, utility bills. Some of them have security. They have a bar or a small tuck shop where they have to pay employees. They have to maintain their property. They're owners of property. So management of the steel band is now becoming more of a business type of organization. But what does that management consist of? What does it require? There is no fit model for it, so I'm just going to speak about some areas that the steel band management of the 21st century will require. We look at the fact that in this 21st century, one of the key things about steel band management will be a governing constitution. The constitution is important because as it guides the operation of the bands. It allows for the election of their officers. It allows for their, their meetings. It defines their management structure. What type of management structure? It defines the roles of the membership, the duties and responsibilities, financial accountability. Very critical in the operation of steel bands today. This 21st century, many of our bands have been up for profit organizations they are going to be regarded as small businesses because the steel pan industry is a business and our bands are part of that business operation. Having a constitution which guides the management of the band, it makes the management therefore accountable to its members. And today, we know that many bands operate with constitutions. Some of them mimic the constitution of Pan Trimbago but they have modified it to suit their specific needs and their structure. Some bands are operating with board of directors. Some have a tiered management structure so that they can function according to their requirements. Generally, in management, there is an executive team or board of directors. And this executive team is usually done through a democratic process of elections in the band. Normally, once a year, once every two years, once every three years, based on the constitution of the band, the election of members to this management team or this executive team will take place. And it is the members, the members of the band, the members who are currently in the management, their supporters, persons who are nominated from outside, because some bands require that they get help with respect to certain skills that they need. So that we will find that in some orchestras as well, 
their official applications for persons to become members of the management structure. Having an executive team allows banks to function, begin to function as businesses. So what are some of the roles? Now there are standard roles in management, but in the state bank movement, some of those roles will be modified. So we can look at the fact that there will be a manager or a leader. We'll have a captain who might perform as a chief executive officer. In some banks, the captain is the operations manager. There is a vice captain, the assistant manager, the assistant leader. His role and function or her role and function will be to assist the manager and the captain in carrying out the operations of the bank. Of course, in any management model, you have a secretary, a treasurer, a public relations officer, the trustees. And we are seeing in our steel bands the emergence of a role called floor representatives. In some bands, this might be their community relations officer, or they might call it their membership officer, different names. But actually, that particular role is designed to facilitate the liaison structure between the players, the members, and the management. What we have found is that today, the modified managerial roles that we are seeing, in some banks, they will have directors, so they will carry managing director or chairman. They'll have a finance director, <clears throat> a PR or communications director, musical directors. And some of them even go into positions, specified positions in relation to what occurs in a steel bank. So we will have a music coordinator. We will have operations manager. There will be property managers. There will be marketing managers. We have a finance manager. We have some banks because of the number of young people coming into the steel bank movement now have official youth representatives on their management. Some have community relations manager, which not only serves the members of the bank, but serves the outreach into the communities where they are located. So our management roles, even though we're taking it from maybe a business model, will be modified because steel bands are quasi-business. We are people-driven, people-oriented, but in order to function effectively and successfully, we have to take on the role of business managers. A critical part of management in any steel ban is how do we allocate financial resources. And this varies based on the style of management that the ban is involved in. Some bans have sponsors where their financial allocations are based on the sponsorship agreements. Many of our steel bans are unsponsored and their allocations basically come from their operations. But a critical part of any financial allocation, especially for steel bands, is to have a budget. The budget will itemize all their expenses, the arranger, their tuners, players, instruments, utilities, and when they have to perform in events. There is a costing that goes with it. So a budget is critical part of the financial allocation when we were looking at management of state banks. A usual practice that we have observed, and many banks are involved in this, is that when banks do engagements, there is a shared participation in terms of financial allocations. Part of the funds goes to the bank's operations and expenses, and part of the funds are given to the players for performing and their attendance in the in the bank. So we see that when we look at the operations of the bank, especially with respect to finance, planning out your engagements for the year, working out a resource allocation, banks are then able to be would be able to decide what they can pay their state side players as they're called, what they have to spend on their operations, and also what they have to spend on their developmental programs. We also observe that with some of the bands currently, some of their skilled and senior players, members, receive additional stipends because they take on now the role of part arranger. So they're during the year when they are not involved in panorama, 
Some of them function as section leaders. Some of them are involved in the maintenance of their instruments, the racks, whatever. So this also has to be tabulated when you're creating your budget in order to properly allocate financial resources. Generally, most banks will provide their members with some sort of traveling allowance, and of course, meals during their practice sessions, especially during the panorama season when there are long practice hours. So in allocating financial resources, when a budget is being planned, you must look at all of these expenses in order to create a good budget for your annual arrangements. One aspect of good steel band management is creating an enabling environment where we have empowerment of the players, the empowerment of the management, but we also have empowerment in enabling environment where we will look at sustainability of the organization. Players are empowered through learning and playing. If they develop their skills, some of them move on to become professionals. Players become renowned through exposure when their bands are successful in many of the events, panorama, music festivals, and other competitions. And then we also note that based on the success of the band, the executive or the management is rewarded accordingly, especially when they are sponsored bands and sponsored arrangements. And this provides an incentive to work towards the further development of the band and future successes. We must also know that even though there will be unsponsored bands, this kind of enabling environment where management is looking to seek to ensure that success breeds success and success allows the band to develop further must be done. Many of our state bands are registered as not-for-profit organizations. Many will have to be registered. Um, I don't know how many are aware, but the NPO Act was passed last year, and this requires that all not-for-profit organizations must now be properly registered. We find that when bands have sponsors, the sponsorship might be an annual renewal, or it might be a long-term arrangement. And this allows them to be plan for sustaining the band over a number of years or sustaining the band on an annual basis. Retaining your sponsorship also creates an environment for su sustainability and success. Having an enabling environment, having an environment that empowers your members will attract players. But players will come because they believe there will be better financial rewards and therefore your membership begins to grow. Participation in activities year round, which will generate funds, also allows you to develop a sustainable program. It also allows you to develop a model for success. Many of our state bands are unsponsored. And normally they would depend on having fundraising projects or some corporate assistance to carry them through the year. But steel bands within communities can become sustainable because many of their players have skills and we can use those skills to build a further relationship or a deeper relationship with their community in terms of projects in the community, in terms of sporting and cultural events. This is one way that it allows the empowerment of the band in terms of sustaining its presence within the community. Many of our youths today are now coming into our steel bands, and we must look at education as being one area of empowerment for them, and one area to sustain them in terms of being involved in steel bands and management of steel bands. Our youth is our future. And if we look, if we believe and use this as a mantra, then we must ensure that our management practices cater for the development of our youths. Many steel bands are now aligning with schools in terms of the junior panorama and junior music festival events, and this will allow them to develop their junior orchestras. Through their junior orchestras, they can now 
encourage their young players to develop skills, not only if they're still playing the instruments, but skills in terms of livelihoods, skills in terms of what would be required to ensure success of the band. There are many skills that are needed, and I think in an earlier presentation, we spoke about the many diverse jobs that are available in the state band sector, which a lot of people don't think about. But it is something where bands themselves could begin to encourage their young players as they come through the education system to start looking at developing these skills and probably encouraging them to utilize those skills in their panniers. And this way they will create a cadre of succession players, not only for themselves, but for persons who can go out and perform elsewhere. One aspect of 21st century steam band management must involve developing the youth. And one of the first areas we look at developing the youth is the fact that it is on the steel pan as a national instrument should be an avenue of governmental responsibility in terms of providing steel bands with the wherewithal to help their young people develop. We know that the Ministry of Education, the Pan and Schools project, has been implemented in 118 schools, the provision of a 16-piece ensemble. And it is planned to have this in all of our schools in our country. Participation in steel band from school age coming up will engage youth in learning skills that can lead them to the jobs that are available in the sector. And for example, we know that in the secondary schools, we have the CVQ program where many young people can learn the whole art of pan construction and pan tuning. We know that the CSEC music program allows them to develop their arranging skills, their playing skills, and this allows us to build out our young people into the job market, but also allows your band to now start having state sides, having performances, having shows in your own pan yard, which will help develop the youth and sustain your band. We know that corporate Trinidad and Tobago have been assisting with funding development programs to the youth, and we need to see a bit more of this. One example of this is the Republic Bank Pan Miners Literacy Project, where students graduate have improved their skills in performing, reading, writing, and arranging music. Many steel bands, in terms of the youth, offer vacation programs where youngsters learn to play the instrument, learn to further their skills, develop music literary skills, so that in the future, we are creating a cadre of fully qualified young professional players. But we must look at the fact that in our communities, where steel banks are located, there must be some kind of employment where the youths can provide the career path. And this is where management of steel bands must now be community oriented linking with the sectors in their community for that kind of linkage and that will allow them to further develop their youth programs major points of a 21st century management management is an integral part of the success of any steel band if we look today at our very successful steel bands, many of them have developed their management structure over the years. Some of them have board of directors, some of them have management levels, some of them have CEOs, but having a management structure where you diversify and you have persons performing roles that come together where you operate as a team allows the greater success of any steel band. Effective management ensures growth and development. We have observed this, and it is something we need to have many bands begin to think about as they move into the future. Having an effective management structure allows the band to develop and succeed. The persons who are in management in steel bands must have some relevant expertise in the roles that they perform. And this is where our developmental youth programs will allow bands to encourage their youth players to learn the skills so that succession into management 
will allow the bank to be able to develop a management structure suited to itself and also to suit it to bring it success. A 21st century steel bank is a small business and must undergo modifications to suit their structure and operations. It is a small business because you are managing not only persons, your members, but you are managing assets. You have your instruments, you have your panniers, you have your racks, you have to plan and perform in events, and this requires having a proper management structure. Persons who are at the helm in management must realize that they must step up to the new challenges and create new ways to manage their state bands in their communities. There is no one management structure that fits all. We can take management structures and modify to suit what we desire for the success of the band. So it is important that we understand basic rules are there. Yes, you have your manager, you have your care as a team is now going to be dependent on the way in which your band is functioning and set up to operate. COVID-19 and the use of technology. COVID-19 pandemic is new to everyone. It is not, was not planned, but it has allowed the use of technology to become even greater. Now, pre-COVID-19, there were many steel bands who were already involving themselves with the use of the technology. Many bands have their email addresses. They have websites. In some bands, they have set up WhatsApp chats so that they can communicate with members at the different levels their general membership, their different sections in the band, their various management levels. Some bands have chats where it is for supporters. So that the technology has started to be, was be incorporated into the functioning of the bands. There are some bands in order to speed up the learning process and because of the technology and because most people have phones that allow the use of the technology started would send scores to their players so that they can come to the panel and get their music on their own, which allows a faster process of learning. But what we have seen with the COVID-19 pandemic is that there is now an increase in the use of the virtual platform, where some bands are now using that platform for practice and performance. So the technology use is now driving a certain aspect of steel band management. With the pandemic, we can no longer congregate as we would normally do to have shows, to have performances, to have different kinds of events. But it has challenged management of many bands to take up the virtual tsunami of the various online events that are now available that we can use to supplement the fact that we can no longer congregate in large numbers. We, we have observed that the technological creativity in the world of PAN has allowed us to connect through many virtual, local, and international events. And therefore, in terms of our management of our bands in the 21st century, we must now have the management structure where inherent in the structure is greater use of technology in terms of the operations of the band, in terms of the functioning of the band, in terms of how the band moves from one level to the next. 